Welcome to a lesson on solving percent problems using the percent equation. There is another video that solves the same types of problems using the percent proportion. And the goal of this video is to solve percent problems. So the important part in setting up and solving an equation is going to be to identify the key words. Of translates to multiplication. Is translates to equals. What or what number translates to a variable. It could be any variable, but I used n here. And if we're given the percent, we need to translate that to its decimal form. Now once we have the equation, we will solve for the unknown and then make sure that the answer is in the correct form, which means if they ask for a number, we leave it as a number. If they ask for a percent, we write it as a percent. So let's go ahead and give it a try. I have the key words over here in the upper right. So what is 12% of 875? So the first word we see is what. That translates to our variable. Let's call it n. Is means equals 12%, which must be written as a decimal, 0 0.12. Of means multiply 875. So now we solve for the unknown, which is very straightforward on this problem. We just need to find this product, 0 0.12 times 875 equals 105. Okay, next question, 25 is, so we write down 25 equals. The next key word we see is what, but it does read what percent. So we are going to use a variable. I could use n, but since I know I'm looking for a percent, I will use p just to remind me to convert my answer to a percent. Of means multiplication, 500. So in order to solve this equation for p, we need to divide by 500. So p is equal to this fraction. Since I know I'm looking for a percent, I'm gonna go ahead and convert this to a decimal, 25 divided by 500 equals 0 0.05. Now remember, I'm converting this to a percent because that's what it asks for. So to convert a decimal to a percent, we will multiply by 100 or move the decimal to the right twice and add the percent sign. Number three, two is, so I write down two equals 4% Point zero four of means multiply, and then what or what number we'll call this n. So two is four percent of what number? Again, in order to solve for n, we have to divide both sides by point zero four. So we would have n equals two divided by point zero four, which gives us fifty. Let's see if that makes sense. 2 is 4% of 50. So it does make sense that 2 is a small percentage of this larger number of 50. And going back up to number 2, 25 is 5% 5 of 500. Again, it makes sense that this number 25 is a small percent of this larger number 500. And then back to number 1, what is 12% of 875? it seems reasonable that 105 is a percent of this large number. Okay, let's go ahead and take a look at a couple applications now. Now when we switch to applications, what we really wanna do is be able to read this problem and then translate it into a simple question like one of the three previous ones. The bookstore buys a textbook for $80 and sells it for $124. What is the percent of markup? Well, first, what is the markup? Well, if they purchase the book for $80 and they're selling it for $124, the markup would be how much do they add to this 80 to come up with $124? Well, we could take $124, subtract $80, and that would give us our markup. And that's going to be $44. So again, the question is, what is the percent of markup? So the question we need to answer is, $44 is what percent of $80. So we had to do a little problem solving here 
And then the idea is to translate this into a simple percent question and then translate this into an equation. So let's go ahead and do that. 44 is means equals what percent, so I'll use P, of means multiplication and $80, so 80. So now we can see that we need to divide by 80 to solve for P. And again, I use P to remind me that I'm looking for a percentage. So 44 divided by 80 and then converted to a percentage. So to convert this to a percentage, remember we multiply by 100, which will give us 55% which is our markup. Let's go ahead and take a look at one more. Typically, a self-employed person must earn 20% more than a non-self-employed person to have the same level of compensation due to extra taxes and expenses. So, if a non-self-employed person earns $18 per hour, how much would a self-employed person need to earn to have an equivalent income? Okay, so there's kind of a lot going on here, but the idea is a self-employed person must earn 20% more. So the question we need to answer is, what is 120% of $18 per hour? Now you might ask, why did I say 120% when it only states 20%? Well, if they earn 100% of what the non-self-employed person earns, they'd earn the same amount, $18 per hour. So it's really 100% plus an extra 20%, which gives us the 120% that the self-employed person must earn. This represents the original $18 per hour. This represents the additional 20%. Okay, so let's see if we can set this up and solve it now. What, we'll use N, is means equals 120% as a decimal would be 1.2 of, means multiplication, and $18 per hour. So we need to find this product, 1.2 times 18, 21.6. Now this represents the hourly rate, so that would be $21.60 per hour. Thank you for watching and have a nice day.